about some weaver. We gotta move. Stay sharp, Mason. Welcome to Kazakhstan. Uh, if you don't know this, uh, the USSR part just is the United Soviet Republics in Kazakhstan was part of the Eastern Bloc during the Cold War. So uh, the Soviets actually took a large area of Kazakhstan over and uh, turned it into a spaceport. And that's where we are now. Uh, I thought this was actually a pretty cool level design choice because the, the starting section at least is kind of like a spacecraft graveyard. Which, I mean, you see aircraft graveyards all the time in video games, especially the Modern Warfare series, uh, but you don't see spacecraft graveyards. And you get to see a Soyuz rocket launch right over there in the distance on my left. Uh, you can't see it now, but it's there. No, no, no. So that's kind of cool, too. It's way too much activity. Yankee 1-3, report. Yankee 1-3, report. We've just gone dark. Here, see what's out there. They're at final countdown. They're Soyuz 2. Scheduled to launch 10 minutes after Soyuz 1. Up ahead, comms building. Mason, we get activity on the road. Check it out. Damn, it's Weaver. He's burnt. Your colleague is unwilling to explain his presence in this facility. And who the fuck is this? Surrender now, and you will be allowed to leave. It's Kravchenko. Dragovich is second in command. This is your only warning. There's nothing we can do, Mason. Weaver's done. No. Your choice. This is not good. Son of a bitch! Whiskey's in your position. Roger, X-ray. Whiskey's covering the road. Weaver's been compromised. Expect the base to be an elevated alert. Hold your position. We are inbound. Roger. All right, let's go. So now we understand why there was all that activity on the road. Uh, Weaver's been found out. Now, uh, it mentioned in the uh, previous cutscene for the, uh, the mission briefing that Weaver had been assigned to the Ascension Group. Uh, it makes sense a little later in the game why this is important. I didn't, or well, in this level, I should say, why it's important. Because I didn't understand it at first, why something shows up a little later, and how it got there. Uh, but it makes a lot more sense with that information in hand. Follow me and keep moving. And if you uh, leave this pipe when Woods is telling you to follow him Good. and you don't Pick it up. do what he says, you'll get caught by the helicopters and shot down almost immediately. And welcome to the first uh, conditional weapon of the level. It's the weird bladed, uh, curved blade weapon. And that is one of the better uh, excuses for guards being distracted completely and turned away from you I've ever seen. You're watching a rocket launch into space. That's a good enough reason, right there. Uh, Let's get him out of sight. In this section here, might as well be on rails. Actually, it is on rails. It might as well be a cinematic. Because you can't look left or right. You can't do anything but move forward. You can't go left or you know, It's just completely on rails. Might as well have been a cinematic. Was saving Weaver more important to you than your objective to kill Dragovich? Weaver was Russian. He was alright. I like the face Mason makes at the end of that. Um, but also, there's a weird spot where it went, uh, went to black. That wasn't a cut or anything like that. That just happened in the game. I think my disc might be, uh, might be scratched a bit. You can't shoot these guys, so I don't even try. We're good. Brooks and Bowman should be right up ahead. X-ray, this is whiskey. Hostiles in sight. Taking them out. Hustle up. And I would introduce you to Brooks, the guy up there with Bowman, but uh, really he doesn't show up for the rest of the game at all. He's just a fourth character to round out your squad for this section. Uh, he doesn't even have any dialogue, as far as I remember. So he's, uh, yeah, he's just kind of there, and I, I don't understand why we really needed a fourth. 
Couldn't have just been Ice Cube on his own. Who knows? So it's not explained why these guys are running around like this, but I assume it's because they're looking for us. Um, like I said, the base is on high alert because they found Weaver and they know there's more people here, so they may be looking for us. They may have found bodies. No, we're good. Just do what they do. And here I get confused and start to follow these guys. I didn't see Ice Cube leave over there on the left. Uh, and then I realized my mistake. Yeah. Um, I only did a test video up to the point where I got shot by the uh, helicopter, and then I said, okay, I know how to do this now. Unas problema. Some noise. You ready? Clear his floor before you move up. I'll shut down the counter. Okay, here we go. Uh, we got another environmental kill. Uh, and I'm going to use the Python for much of this building because I don't like the ACOG AK for close range combat. So I'm going to be Pythoning, which is not a bad move. It's basically a one hit kill no matter where you hit him. Uh, and overall, it's a pretty good gun. Uh, the speed reloader makes it a lot easier because uh, normally you have to insert every bullet individually. Uh, there, I was looking for a dual mag AK or an extended mag AK. Uh, but I didn't find one. That's not a big deal. Oh, by the way, box of paper, immune to bullets. So if you're ever getting shot at, just hold the box of paper in front of you. And here we go. And Call of Duty ladders are finicky, by the way. I like this kill. Forget <sighs> These Russians are not as hardy as they would have you believe. Now the reason I picked up an extended mag AK is because enemies flinch a lot in this game. And uh, when you hit them, they, like, you see how I didn't even touch him there. Uh, they'll just completely like duck down below your bullets or something like that. Um, so I'm looking for what I'm supposed to be doing next, because I'm supposed to grab a crossbow and shoot over there. But that stuff's not loaded up. And I couldn't find Woods who gives you the crossbow, so I jumped down. And he's up here. The man is made out of magic, let's face it. So here we go. The, you're stationary for this section, by the way. Um, but you've got an explosive bolt crossbow that just happened to be here, I guess. And you have to defend uh, Brooks and Bowman from the Russians who are coming in to get them. Uh, I like the crossbow. It's not everyone's favorite gun. Uh, but in multiplayer and single player, it's actually pretty good. Uh, which is nice because you're going to have to be using it a bit later in the game, too. Uh, the best part is really sticking people with the explosive bolts and watching them run to their friends. Uh, that's kind of entertaining. And uh, are you ready for a graphical glitch? Right there. Where'd that white spot come from? I think that's actually telling you to aim for it, but I always aim for inside the window in hopes of killing the guy who uh, walks through the room. You'll see him in a second. That guy. I think that's supposed to be yellow, but it came out as completely white when I was recording. And conditional weapon again, the MP5. And remember when I said breach and clear still happened? Weaver. So, pretty cool. And Woods comes in through the door like a chump. Um, but here I'm going to get rid of the... MP5, so I can show off the PM63, which there's going to be a little bit more ammo for throughout the level. And I'm going to show off non explosive bolts. You saved his life. Now you had to locate the Ascension group and kill the scientists. Oh, I had to kill Dragovich. Well, I wanted to show off non explosive bolts, but, um,. The game doesn't tell you if you have explosive or non-explosive equipped at any given time, so I, <laughs> I have no idea what I had. Uh, but you have a time limit all of a sudden. Uh, see, I, I switched, so now I should have non-explosives. But um, you have a time limit now. Oh, explosive, I guess. And uh, the game doesn't tell you why you have a time limit. But you should assume it has to do with the fuck all giant fuck all rocket ahead of you, 
uh, which it does. That that's actually the countdown for the Soyuz rocket to uh, to uh, go off the pad there. And um, I don't know why it didn't feel the need to tell you that. So let's pop this guy with a normal crossbow bolt. Uh, normal bolts are one-hit kills, just like a sniper rifle usually is. And uh, ah, they're pretty useful. The there's no real difference except for the fact that it's a, a like a one shot, one kill kind of thing, but it's also one shot at the time. Uh, with most, you know, sniper rifles in this game, even if they're bolt action, you can get a couple shots off in the time it takes you to reload the crossbow. Now, I almost died here. I don't know where I was getting shot from in the back, but I was. I think it was this guy. He might have been in the last stand. Um, but this section's a little difficult, and it's a little hard to understand why they felt the need to, uh, put a bunch of guys underneath a giant rocket and give them, you know, grenades and stuff and bullets. That seems like the way to have your launch program fail miserably. Um, but, you know, whatever. So, here I switch crossbow bolts to make this a little easier on me. Now, you saw an enemy throw a grenade there, uh, and it took a while for me to come back over near it and uh, not get blown up by it. That's because they never, never cook any of the grenades in this game. Uh, the enemies and your allies, they'll pick them up. Uh, actually, your allies will just pick them up off the ground whenever they have them at their feet. Um, the enemies never, ever uh, cook the grenades. So you can have a couple on you and just run away or pick one up and throw it back or something and be completely okay. And I was very surprised when I nailed that guy in the face with a grenade and he didn't die because direct impacts will kill you in multiplayer. Uh, this guy's got his leg gone, but I'm gonna stab him anyways. Uh, this is just before one of the more annoying sections in the level. Um, so I had to pick up, I had to drop my crossbow because it would be doing me no good in a moment. And that guy has dual Makarovs, which I wanted to pick up to show you, but he, uh, he only dropped a single which kind of made me upset. But here we go. This section's uh, pretty straightforward. Mason, blow on that fucking wall. Set. You could use the door, but Mason just decided that the wall would be a better spot for a door. Uh, but of course, when you do that, now, it's not completely explained how these scientists died. As you can see, there's no blood on the ground or anything like that. I'm assuming Dragovich came in here and destroyed all the stuff after he found out all the, you know, he killed all the scientists and all that stuff. Um, but hey, let's grab this. Uh, remember when I said it made sense uh, a little later when something showed up? This is that something. Weaver was here with the Ascension Group, and he, he uh, obviously planted that for us. And that's kind of cool. I think that's uh, Treyarch telling a little bit better story than Infinity War would. They would just have it show up and it'd be awesome. Um, but in this game, a little bit of everything makes some sense. So now that we've shot down a rocket, which did not happen like that in real life, at, even close to at all, uh, we have to go destroy the rest of the Ascension group, which also didn't exist as far as I can tell. Um, like I said, this game takes a lot of... Li Let me in the door. Come on. This game takes a lot of liberties with history. The rest of this section group will be trying to give them So this section, there's two shotguns there if you didn't see it, it's like a brief second. In <sighs> the tumbling. The the first thing a lot of these so uh, soldiers end up doing whenever you see them is just rolling into a room. I don't know why, but it seems that the the main thing they teach you in you know, the Soviet version of West Point, is, or Spence Nash training, let's say, is how to roll. And obviously not how to throw grenades, because they're terrible at that. Um, but yeah, this section, this little area here is annoying, because you are trying to clear out this entire room, um, but I think the game expects you to do it from that back corridor there, but you can't actually see all of the room from there, so you have to go forward, but your teammates will not go forward, which makes some sense, as they would probably push you out of cover more than they would help you there, but um, I would really like a little bit of support on this, or at least someone else to get shot. Jump cut. There we go. Uh, I died in the section up ahead. And that guy rolled again. 
Not this section. When you die, it sends you back to where I, I uh, had that jump cut, so you'd have to watch me go through this section twice, and not everything lines up, so I just decided to cut back to a previous section. Um, I don't like this section. This, this is, um, I honestly think that this game actually has monster closets akin to Modern Warfare 2, or Modern Warfare 1 and the previous Call of Duty games. Uh, uh, if you don't know what those are, it's basically where the enemy team, uh, the uh, enemy team, Jesus, the enemies in the level will just spawn infinitely uh, until you push past a certain point. Uh, in Modern Warfare 1, it was much, it was very noticeable, especially in the uh, American missions, where you would be invading the country and you'd have some guys shooting at you from a, a roof, and there would always be a guy on that roof unless you went past like a car or something like that. Um, so Modern Warfare 2 did away with that for the most part, and I thought Black Ops did as well, but you'll see in this section, I waste a lot of time shooting people for no good reason. And, uh, there's already four guys there, you'd think that's probably enough. And, like I said, throwing stuff back is a good idea. But, these guys just keep, they just keep piling out of that room. And there's a set number of guys in that room. There's, uh, five guys or four guys in that room, on the right. And you need to go through that room. If you try to power through this section, you'll get shot by the guys in the window on the right. And, uh, there's another door on the far side of that room. So, you've got to kind of go through this room eventually. And, uh, so I prepare for that right there. The smoke grenades in single player last almost forever. So, I'm not concerned with it. But I wanted to make sure that there was only maybe one or two guys in this hallway before I did that. Huh. I do something really dumb, which is I keep reloading. Another another tumbler. But I reload right as I come into this room, which is a mistake. You should really reload before you enter any room. Uh, because this game's enemy placement is kind of an asshole. And I almost died here about twice. Um, but, like I said, enemies flinch a lot, so I usually jump for extended mags weapons. Uh, weapons like the FNFAL and uh, the M14 later in the game, and the shotguns and sniper rifles don't really re create a lot of flinging, so you're kind of okay with those, but the automatic rifles like the uh, AK-47, the Commando, and whoop, out the window, uh, those things tend to make them flinch a lot, and that can lead to a lot of stupid deaths on your part and a lot of wasted ammo. Uh, so everyone, I hope you enjoyed the level, we're just about done here, just gotta clear out a few more guys, and uh, Hopefully you'll be back next time, uh, where we're going to be going to Vietnam, and we'll be staying there for much of the game, really. Tell me got right. the hell out of here. Thanks everyone again. We're going after Dragovich. We're losing him again! Stay with me, Mason! Kachinko escaped before we could get to him. You were getting close. Dragovich was there, wasn't he? We searched the whole base. Couldn't find the bastard this anywhere. This is a waste of time. He's delusional. But then we ran into Dragovich's limo. I had him. Satisfied, Mason? No! No, not yet. Not until I see the body. Dragovich! Did you confirm the kill? Trust me. That rat bastard is a fucking charcoal briquette.